Welcome to the SAP HANA Academy. My name is Bob and in this series of videos we'll be looking at SAP S4 HANA. In this series of videos we'll be looking at how to use core data services. In this video we'll be looking at testing and looking at the available flights query which was a consumption view which we built in the last video. So what we did in the previous video is that we created the available flights analytic query. The view was created on our flights by the airport consumption view and this view makes use of a couple of filters and also includes a formula as you can see here. Now we could test this particular view in our final end user analytical tools such as analysis for office. We're going to do that in a later video but for this video we'll test it in our S4 system. So what we're going to do is copy that ABAP catalog SQL name which is at the top of the screen we need to copy that and then what we're going to do is we're going to run this in our SAP front end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to our um, SAP logon and I'm going to log on as our user which is SHA. So I'll double click on that system and what I'll do is I'll log into the client 100 and the user SHA and I'll log in with my password. Now for the last test we ran was on our composite query and we ran the command RS RTS ODP DIS which works for testing cubes. However our available flights is an analytic query so we require a different tool to test it. So to do this we're going to use a different tool to test it. So we need to run a different transaction. That transaction is RS RT and I'm going to put a forward slash N before it. So what we need to do is what you'll see is it's called the query monitor and what we need to do is go back to our airport query copy that query name which I already have and then paste it into our query like so. Now what we'll do is we'll append a prefix of 2C which identifies that this is an analytical query created via a specific CDS. So I'll just put 2C before the query so all we need to do now is change the query display to HTML. This is just the format of how we're going to see the data. So if I click on the drop down, you've got various options, analysis for office, so on and so forth. And then lastly, all we need to do is execute this query. So on the top left, you can execute. So of course, because we've got two parameters, which you can see indicated in the middle of the screen. Oops, if I just click on close. Because we've got two parameters, those two parameters, which we set, of course, in the view are departure airport and arrival airport. Now, if I click on the drop down, you can see we've got all, a list of all the airports, which means that the first parameter works, of course. We can select by typing. We can select from a list. Now, I'm going to select Frankfurt as the first option. Now, of course, I don't need to select the arrival airport, but because we said that the option is not mandatory, but what I have to do is select a the first parameter. So for the second um, parameter, which is arrival airport, I'll select JFK and then I'll execute. So as you can imagine, what we're doing is we're seeing all the information for that flight, which goes from Frankfurt to JFK, grouped by airline, connection number and flight date. Of course, on the right, you've got all the measures, airfare, maximum capacity. And lastly, you've got the available seats, which, of course, is the formula that we built, which minus the capacity minus the seats that were taken. And of course, we've also got at the bottom our dimensional fields that we did not annotate as rows. And these are available as free characteristics. So what we're going to do in the next videos is we're going to look at this analytical query further using old data. We'll also use other end user analytic tools such as analysis for office to do some more investigation on the data.